because because that's going to be like part of the intro where it goes bam bam bam. Nobody's gonna hear the exhale. So anyway, hi, welcome on to Third World Linux, uh, episode eighty-eight. My name is Ag and I'm Zhao. And on this episode of Third World Linux, we're going to be talking about the Commission on Elections and that data breach that happened. Yeah, because we now hold the world record Pinoy Pride number one. <laughs> Woohoo! Of the largest data breach by a government agency. Of a government agency. Of a government agency. <laughs> sigh, sigh, sigh. Right, so just as, a, just as a bit of a background, we have an election this year. Next month. Yeah, we have an election next month. And um, a bunch of people registered to vote because of this new law, new law. that said you have to have you have to submit biometric data mm-hmm. to you know before you can vote there was so a new batch of registration for 18 months so it's a long period yeah so like fingerprints and stuff fingerprints and all the usual voter information you need to provide yeah um, there was a big case about this actually mm-hmm. right? like how to or, or whether whether or not this was an invasion of your privacy a derogation of the right to vote that sort of thing um, and well uh, the, the law is coming from a really good place I think mm-hmm. um, this 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 zombie voters thing where all of a sudden allegedly <laughs> in um allegedly in a city in metro manila you had exactly 10,000 new voters that gave a last minute spike to whoever like to somebody run who was running yeah who was who was uh, running for some public office and uh this was this was a way to sort of mitigate that because the right to vote is a personal right. Like it's your right to vote. Mm. And how do you know that it's you? Your fingerprints. Yeah. Right. Something the unique that's entirely your own. Yeah. So you know, arguments on both sides. But the fact of the matter is we have this or the, the, the Commission on Elections has this database of, um, of, of voters information name uh last known address of course sign- fingerprints fingerprints other vital statistics etc other numbers yeah yeah because you have to present an id right yes so because you don't need a voter's id anymore because you have your fin- thumbprint yeah right so you know all well and good blah, yeah. blah blah all well and good we'll streamline the elections no more long lines yeah stuff like that yeah, until um, until one day on April six, yeah, April six, where anonymous is uh, where, where anonymous defaced the Commission on Elections website, saying make your make it more secure and make sure this will be a clean elections. Yeah, because eh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because see, this country has a history of shoddy elections. Yeah, and well, this um, again going back to like I'm, I'm not sure if we mentioned it in this version of the recording but voting by machine we mm-hmm. have this voting by machine thing which is like the dumbest way to to vote <laughs> right um, because like yeah we have shoddy elections and stuff but because we're all voting by machine now that makes it a whole lot shoddier because back in the day um, you had people that would watch you had you had watchers, watchers. yeah so you know you had well, pretty much a bunch of law students that were volunteers <laughs> for their particular candidate, like standing behind the teachers that were carrying uh, yeah. them, doing the hard but dignified job of protecting the democracy of this country. <laughs> yeah. And and some of those, because um, when it comes to like counting votes, mm-hmm. if like w- one of the things that the teachers have to do is decide whether or not this vote is spurious. Yes. Right. Because you have some morons that won't spell the person's name correctly yes so you know uh we have this rule like if it sounds like the person's name then that counts as a vote, vote for, the for person. that person and you have your election watchers that can contest that mm-hmm. but now with these machines you've lost that check yeah because you just shade a number yeah and and um you don't have manual count and you don't have people watching the count yeah um and so before the shadiness came from people with guns came from <laughs> um, it came from those those, those blackouts where you had uh so then the yellow boxes like or um, the worst case scenario they just outright shoot the teachers yeah um and the the question is right and we're going fairly like off tangent now but um with machine voting fucking your your uh you you eliminate the person with the gun holding up the bus that's taking the ballots to the counting station but <laughs> nowadays you just need to switch an SD card. <laughs> yeah. And fucking the um 
I'm not even sure that the connections are encrypted. Um, and they probably do it over the fucking internet. So. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, uh, going back. So, yeah, Anonymous warned the commission on elections to protect the election and make sure your security is up to spot. Yeah. And then two days later, Bob's your uncle. There goes Lulzec Philippines. Well, oh, Lulzec. Lulzec. Or a local arm or whatever. I'm not sure. Uh, released 55 million database, uh, 55 million voter information on the clear web. Want to have it? There's a torrent out there <laughs> of it. With your signature on it. <laughs> not my signature. I hope, I hope not. <laughs> so there it is. And the sad part for me about this is the breach is there, but Comelec's response. <sighs> Comelec responded by saying, we, we're currently investigating and they probably don't have the, the data or, or it's unverified. That's the term. Yeah, they it's mean. unverified. And, um, and, and the thing that kind of annoys me about that particular, um, that, that particular statement is that when it comes to something like this, like when you have a fucking breach, mm-hmm. the instant or the, the, uh, the thing to do is assume the worst. Plug it. Yeah, plug it. Just take the entire fucking system offline. Like, yeah. <laughs> Remove it. Right? Plug it. And, and especially for something as fucking sacred as the vote, the, the, the system of voting in a goddamn democracy. <laughs> right? Like, like the, the, this election process is, fuck, if a state had, if, if, if our state was, had a religion, democracy would be it's, the official religion. Yeah. More or less. And yes, I understand we are a Catholic country, but officially there's a separation of church and state and like you're not allowed to teach religions in public schools, that sort of thing. But <laughs> if we're going by pure political theory, um, democracy is the state religion. And something as sacred as democracy uh, relies on the best practices in order for it to work. I can't fucking connect to HTTPS, <laughs> comelec.gov.ph. <laughs> Fun times, right? Fun times ahead, right? So, so apparently it doesn't have fucking SSL. Oh, so so if I take away the S after HTTP, oh, they have their website. <laughs> All well and good, right? Copyright two thousand one. If you scroll down, oh, let's see, uh, two thousand one to two thousand and sixteen. Mm. Apparently, their web designer is fine. Um, <laughs> and and the thing that bothers us the most, of course, not aside from the response, is the fact that. Even if they're saying it's unverified, wired.co.uk, wired pretty much, covered it. And in their coverage, they tried to contact five people from their database, from that leak. Yeah. All of them verified that, yeah, that's us. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, wait, 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 wait. I had another thing that I wanted to say. Um, yeah, assume the worst. Yeah, assume the worst. They did not assume the worst. And that's what's the most disturbing because the best practice really is to assume the worst. And to say some shit about like, oh, we are still investigating this. So you mean you're not acting? You're not double checking your breach? It's like the metaphor is... Uh, if you see a small hole in your boat, you don't say we're investigating. You fucking go back to land. <laughs> <laughs> or you plug that shit up as quickly as yeah, possible. Even with the cork. <laughs> yeah, pirate like, style. <laughs> like like if, even, if, even if you're not... Even if you're not sure that you're going to drown, assume that the boat is going down. <laughs> <laughs> or say, you know, you're out, holed up in a castle. Somebody's trying to breach. They got a breach. Big hole over there. Oh, yeah, let's investigate. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine in the Crusades, some of the Crusaders hold up in their castle or in the forts. <laughs> like, oh, the opponents are there, you know, they're banging on the wall, finally make a breach. Oh, let's investigate. <laughs> and other was, but then, but then, um, uh, so, something interesting that we were when, when we were talking about this uh, couple of, a couple of days yeah. ago, actually, uh, the the question that we were yelling into the ether was, why the fuck was the database online? Like, why the fuck was the database on um, on the public internet without an SSL connection? <laughs> My biggest thing is of course they want to streamline it and if you go to the Comelec website you plug in the name 
some other information and they'll tell you if you're registered they'll tell you if you're registered and if you have your biometric data there yeah yeah so again it makes it it makes the process of the election streamlined and a quick less hassle yeah and and when i when i saw this part of the website i was like oh well fine that really isn't like some of the yeah. some of the things you give away when you talk to someone at a party yeah yeah that sort of thing <laughs> um and you know i i guess it's Sort of forgivable. I mean, fucking not having an HTTPS connection is unfucking forgivable. But um, say having somebody's you know name, birthday, etc. That you know, say, yeah, ha- having that like on on the public internet is fine, I guess, because that's what extent. you you know that's what you're using to. Um, that's what you're. Uh, it, yeah. it has to be on the internet if your website is going to work, which of is course. why they, they hit a MySQL database. Yeah. Um, and these are the things that you see outside polling places anyway. Yeah. And right? again, my, going back, my metaphor is if you give that information away at a party anyway, then you can give it at a website. Yeah. Now, the, now the problem is. Now, the, now, now the weird thing about this is, uh, they have a few what they call classes of mm-hmm. data sensitivity right? mm-hmm. or sen- uh, what was it data what was the word uh security levels if yeah. i'm not mistaken yeah so you have some bits of you have some information that is not that sensitive and you have other information that is a lot more sensitive so the non sensitive stuff i you know it est uh, your name your birthday that sort of thing yeah. and then you have the sensitive shit like your fingerprints or passport numbers. Yeah, yeah your yeah. your ID numbers and stuff, right? Yeah. Like the the shit that's going to get um that, that's going to get your identity stolen. You yeah. Know? The things that <laughs> banks require. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Um apparently that was also on the fucking SQL database. <laughs> that's openly available on the internet. Without an HTTPS connection. Can I cry? <laughs> <laughs> fucking clown show, man. Fucking oh, amateur hour. It's just... I could have done a better job and I have zero sysadmin <laughs> training. <laughs> the, the thing, because because I was telling Zhao, I still trust this gov- I, I I have so little trust in this government, but I'm still giving them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're trying to save money because this is supposed... The, the highly sensitive data should be at an intranet. Yeah, but then the armed forces and the police... Well, yeah, the armed forces, they have their own little set of pipes that doesn't connect to the open internet. Yeah. Why the fuck wasn't that there? What the uh, <laughs> I'm Comlek. <laughs> oh, oh, you vote. I have no idea why they didn't want to implement the system. Because they're voting with machines. <laughs> and it's expensive. Heck, they don't even want to approve the voter receipts. Yeah, well, there was a video that I saw on YouTube about mm-hmm. like why voting machines suck. Um... Because you rely on the voting machine to count. Yeah. Um, but then if, you know, if, if you say like, oh, but then you can still verify it with humans, blah, 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 blah. Congratulations. You just invented the most expensive pencil in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, I was explaining it to my girlfriend that why I think voting machines are not okay, but I'm still okay with them because again, you don't have to shoot teachers anymore, but at the cost of democracy. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, if you have, um, if your watchers are good enough, yeah, right, they're doing their job and really dedicated for their candidate. Yeah, then like no more teachers have to die in the name of corruption. I mean, yeah. democracy. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the problem here is okay. What could have they done? Let's. I mean, we've already reiterated some steps. Wait, what do you? What, what could they have done? I mean, after Comelec. the breach or prior to the breach, and what, just protecting the data. Know, an, an SSL, uh. <laughs> First up, HTTPS. <laughs> yeah. At the very Step least. one, yeah, HTTPS. Step two, not all the, like the sensitive information, keep it in the intra. Yeah. Or, or at least like not, you know. But then you see, that's, that's amateur art. Cause if we can come up with solutions and we're just, well, I consider myself a casual Linux <laughs> user. Yeah, I, I consider myself um, uh, an advanced user, enthusiast. <laughs> somebody that knows how to mess things up good and proper. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and try to put it back, but just ends up with... <laughs> ends up picking and paving anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I guess, um, yeah, just keep 
uh, keep them separated. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess. But then, but then that's that. That's for me. It, it still goes back to like, why the fuck are we voting with machines? Because I can sort of understand that if these machines need an internet connection in order to properly function, then of course the sensitive information has to be on the internet in order to verify the person's thumbprint. Again, why can't it be an intra? That's true. <laughs> yep. If you just need to interconnect those specific machines to each other to the Comilic database, I think yeah. it's possible to be an intra. Yeah, 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 exactly. Why does it have to be inter? Expensive, I guess. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be expensive, but this is democracy we're talking about. <laughs> this is the state religion. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so there. Well, in terms of what they could have done as a response. If, yeah, step one, plug the leak. Yeah, well, un- unplug everything, man. Yeah, yeah. unplug everything. Yeah, I mean, make sure, yeah. How they access it, remove that anymore. Now shut everything down. Yeah, th- th- you shouldn't, you shouldn't lead, th- they shouldn't have led with. Um, it's not fair to our sys admins, blah, 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 because that's that's what they that's what they mm-hmm. did. It's about like oh, and, um, we have to find out whether it was uh, misfeasance, malfeasance, or nonfeasance before we can determine the commission on elections liability. Uh, was there criminal negligence, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, well, no, you just say fuck it, man. We're we we uh, we have we have yet to um, here we have yet. To determine the severity of the breach, but we but are, best practices mm, dictate mm. that we are to assume the worst. Yeah. Or we are currently dealing with it as we speak. We are also running our own investigation, verifying all the data that was released, and we will try as well to release information as a story unfolds. No, that's simple bullshit, PR. Man. No, I mean that's simple PR. Yeah, that's simple yeah. PR terms. PR speak just to like tell everybody. Okay, don't panic. It's organic. <laughs> it's it's organic. <laughs> or we're not about. We, we don't want people to lose our their collective shit. And here's what also makes me afraid of this country. Nobody lost their collective shit except me <laughs> and you. But you're not registered <laughs> because we're voting with machines. <laughs> <laughs> I know my vote doesn't count. <laughs> I know my votes don't count for a long time, but it makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> well, I have a sledgehammer, no? <laughs> In reference to the Triple H video. Anyway, um. Yeah, uh, what's it? The, the country didn't lose its collective shit. That's really interesting, actually. That that just shows how how, how little faith we have in the democracy. Uh, how little faith we have in the democracy that we supposedly have. I do believe we do have democracy, or at least it's something that we have to believe in <laughs> to progress in this great nation. Because <laughs> we're always number one, baby. Anyway, um, it's 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 sad because. Oh, by the way, um. Here we are, like twenty minutes into this. Uh, we are citing a number of articles. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was an article that was uh, that was on the Rappler and Sunstar websites, mm-hmm. which talk about the question of liability of the Comelec, whether or not they are liable for criminal negligence. Well, fuck it, I say yes, they are because negligence is what a reasonably prudent person would do given the circumstances and not having HTTPS for something that... Um, this secure. <laughs> yeah, is, is secure, especially for... And this important. Yeah, yeah. like, I, 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 that, that's, that is akin to not locking the door at the Register of Deeds. <laughs> like, the Register of Deeds here in Cebu, fucking amazing, right? They don't have an air conditioner where they keep all of the titles mm-hmm. because if there is a hole in the wall, that is a security risk. Oh, oh, indeed. that is fucking how hardcore they are. That That's wow. Wow. Right. So like not having an HTTPS connection. I, I, I can't get over that. Um, yeah. So there was the, the Sunstar article. And then uh, we have the Wired UK article. The Wired UK article where they showed the extent and telling everybody why like they also tested yeah they contacted five people from yeah. the database and verified then there is uh the trend micro report the trend micro report an independent security firm in the philippines mm-hmm. oh well not security it sounds like they were military <laughs> <laughs> punisher no. they were a uh, tech security firm yeah yeah who released the magnitude of the uh, of of or how it would impact yeah, it's, it's a Japanese company, by the way. Yeah. Micro. Then, of course, uh, the register. 
also covered it in the UK. A lot mm-hmm. of UK po- uh, websites. It's okay. We have a UK listeners. <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, uh, wait, no. Trend Micro. It's American, but they have a huge presence in Asia, and their headquarters are in Japan or something like that. Yeah, and um, Mega the 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 Register's article focuses like on the tech environment of the Philippines because they also cited uh, they had a consultant where they said uh, the one of the observations of the consultant is that okay, let me just quote it. Hmm. There are a lot of talented hacking groups. Oh, okay. Chris Boyd, a senior malware intelligence analyst, uh, quote saying, quoted saying, there are a lot of talented hacking groups in the Philippines. And it's no surprise that a hack like this happened. Whether in hospitals, airports, or shopping malls, every terminal you see is running Windows XP. Additionally, most conversations at hacking events in the country tend to run political, with many attendees frustrated with what they feel is under investment in the nation's security infrastructure. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. <laughs> yeah, because this is this is the problem with with states in general. Problem with uh, with with governments and states mm-hmm. in general. Um, it's there, there seems to be this. There seems to be this. Uh, not undercurrent. There seems to be this idea that it is. It's it's okay. Don't panic. We have a law. <laughs> Right, like, oh, we have this anti-cyber crime law, and that's what they're going, and, and that's what they're trying to get the Lulzsec guys for um, mm-hmm. illegal access or unauthorized access or something like that. Like, chill, we got a law. But the problem is, even well and good, you have that law. The information is gonna be out there. Yeah. Oh, the 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 no, the, the the point that I was going for was. Mm. Um, the and, and then the state and then states just leave it at that. Yeah. Governments, countries, they just well, governments. Leave it at that. Like we have a law, we're cool. <laughs> right? It's like it's it's like saying, um it's it's like saying that if you go into somebody's house and take uh take something by like breaking down a door or something, mm-hmm. that's robbery mm-hmm. with force upon things. Um and that's cool. You don't need to lock your doors. Cha ching. <laughs> no, for my the metaphor I want, this is the argument I have against CCTV cameras, that it's not actually a crime deterrent. It's just an evidence of the crime, but it won't deter crime. Yeah. Because if I'm walking captured by CCTV camera, somebody stabs me. Oh yeah, we have a CCTV camera. It's okay, we can capture him. I still got stabbed. <laughs> I'm still bleeding half to death in the middle of the streets. <laughs> that's, that's not cool. Don't make me, don't make him stab me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, CCTV. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. There, just because we have a law doesn't doesn't mean that you can do away with the best security practices, especially on, especially when it comes to something as uh, something as quote sacred as mm-hmm. the democracy of which our government is supposedly. Trying to protect. Yeah. But what I'm worried is, of course, that information is out there. Can be used any way, form, whatever. Yep. Identity. Identity. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Theft. Identity theft is a huge like Not even that. It's probably the worst case scenario, but, you know, phishing. Yeah, phishing. PH, huh? Phishing. <laughs> PH. Like, hey, there's a data breach. Let's catch some salmon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scams. Or they could use it. To, I mean, fine, access the banks and all those many dark and dastardly like activities that could happen. And what will the government do for you? It's okay. We have a law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't let me go through that hassle. Yeah. But it's and and the trouble is you can't easily just. I mean, how they're gonna fix this a month away? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it isn't. That's not I, affecting that, that, isn't, the, that, that isn't the point, though. Like, um, no, for me, my trust with Comelec for my case. Well, like, if they can't even protect the data they have now, how can they protect the vote? Yeah. So, and you, you know why? And this is, um, and and the reason that that uh, the country isn't losing its collective shit is because the very people that can make this an issue stand to lose the most if this becomes an issue. That is to say, if politicians make this an issue, all of a sudden they lose their ability to cheat. 
Exactly. Exactly. Especially, imagine that. Our votes are just in the internet, passing through the pipes without a secure connection. <laughs> well, fine. Maybe, maybe the, the, the machines themselves have like, you know, the sec- yeah, the secure what connection. they claim, but I mean, they're claiming a lot of stuff. And there's no way to review. There's no way to review. There's because no way to review the source code. Yeah. And even if we were able to review the source code, that is only the source code for this one machine. You know, it's like too many problems with voting by machine. But um, hmm. would what what do you think are they running on? Some proprietary blah blah blah. Some propri- most likely proprietary. Well, it can't be. It can't be anything GPL'd uh-huh. because. It has to be a closed system. Yeah, because um, I, I was actually reading up on the GPL because of the... Um, uh, the, the legalese? Yeah, the, uh, the, the the case with VMware. Oh, okay. The VMware case, right? And it was, you know, it was, it was simply that GPL code cannot touch non-GPL code. So, uh, so they're not going to use GPL most likely. Yeah. Um, well, well, they can, but then but they, have to re, they have to re-license their proprietary codes. So. In our background reading of this, have you encountered that Comelec is actually... They're not using a private third-party firm or even like outsourcing some of the developers, that, uh, developers, their admins or whatnot, right? What do you mean? Like they're all in-house? It, is it so Canadian? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't check because I was not able to encounter in any of the news articles, clippings, or comic yeah, well, information. They, we're using the same machines that we used. Yeah, it's six still, years it, ago. Right? It's going to be the same Picos machines where it's easy as switching out a SD card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cheating is as easy as switching an SD card with a preloaded database. Yeah. And now it's a hell of a lot easier mm. because uh, there's a, what do you call that? In the string, in one of the databases, there's a string like the, that pretty much says if the voter already casted a vote. Yeah. Currently, all of them in the database, thankfully, all of them are currently null. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Except the overseas voters, because I think the overseas vote, uh, absentee voting has already been casted. And that in itself was actually very troublesome. How do they do it? Email? Hmm? No, they have machines in the embassies. Oh, okay. But that's already troublesome because you know what happened in the voter seat turnout? Yeah, they didn't get the... They didn't get the, the name of the vote that they had. The person they voted didn't show up and they can't contest it anymore. Like, oh, it's already in the system. We can't change it anymore. You have, you, you should have made sure that it was your vote. Like, no, I didn't specifically voted for this person. Why, why the fuck do we vote by, vote by machine? Because everybody wants it fast because before three weeks, four weeks, a month, it took only a month to have a new president. Now it's, I think the projection is three days. Last time it was just three days. Yeah, but if you have a religion, <laughs> would you like a religion that was invented three days ago or a religion that was invented three months ago? Well, technically, I believe in a dude that woke up after three days. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, it's it's like, would you would you uh, would you drive a car that was built in three days or a car that was built in three months? Who built the car? Democracy did. Because <laughs> <laughs> if Mancario from the local garage <laughs> just built it, and then another built by the team over at Tesla, I go over and <laughs> at Tesla <laughs> and Elon Musk personally test driving it before. Yeah, I, I go for Elon Musk's three day car over. Right, fine. <laughs> You get my you get my idea. Yeah, I right? get you. But yeah, of course, we have to be comedic about this. I'm trying. No, let, let me let, let me let me try to find like an ironclad, <laughs> um, an ironclad uh, three day metaphor. metaphor here. Uh huh. <laughs> Cook. In, no, 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 not newfangled technology versus something that is absolutely tried and fucking true. Ah, of course, the, the tried and true, of course, yeah. but. How do you get away from that newfangled technology? She continuously develop it. The problem is, well, you see, this yeah, this, like is, this is like said article earlier. No budgets, and at the same time, no effort, no political will. Yeah, and they didn't do mock testing on their own. You know what? The, it's really weird, right? Because for uh, for a show called Third World Linux, 
um, we are we are very pro technology. Of course, like I I love the idea of a self driving car. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to have a self driving like like I would love to have self driving cars in this country because of all of the stupid fucking taxi drivers and jeepney drivers. But I still want to have a road. like. Like, a wheel in front of me. Yeah, but just to make sure it's still a car. But anyway, <laughs> that's right? personal nuances. You know, technology is yeah. fucking amazing, man. Like this is this is obviously the way to um to to improve humanity, right? Technology mm-hmm. is the bright and shining future, particularly free and open source software. Yeah, yeah. But if there is one thing that don't I want... don't believe technology should take any part in, it is democracy. Ah. Right. A democracy should not have computers counting votes. Has to be for the people, from the people, by the people. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And you know the pursuit of happiness and liberty, and not getting our teacher shot. Mm. <laughs> and and as much as it is the case, the argument goes back to convenience, security. Exactly. Convenience versus security. Um. I mean, because what Comelec is doing with their current structure, that's very convenient. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't cost a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all there. So, you know. <laughs> what was it? It was, um, there was convenience, security, and low cost. Yeah, low cost. You can have two of the three. Yeah. Yeah. Security and low cost is not very convenient. Ah, right. okay. Because okay. like, what? And then convenient, but low cost, not have security. Right. So you can have, you can have two of the three, but never all three of them. A continuous tension between <laughs> low cost security. And That's can, what. Yeah. Uh, it's still as it's disconcerting. And what I'm afraid of, of course, is the democracy you believe in. I, I'm having like a schism right now. <laughs> if democracy is the state's religion, not so much democracy, but how people implement it. Yeah. And one of the many, many problems we have here in the third world would, you know, my, my, my next question is, is this ever going to happen again? Of course. <laughs> and well, the, the, the thing is, um, this isn't, I don't think that this is something that is limited to the third world. It just so happens that we have a huge population, mm. which is why it, it, it became a really a big huge thing range. because we have 50 million registered voters. 55 um, million registered voters, which is great yeah. for a country that is 100 million. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, you know, um, but, but this isn't, uh, and as, as rightly pointed out, actually, by the, uh, by the lawyers of the Commission on Elections, cybercrime isn't something that, uh, isn't something that is unique to the third world. This is mm-hmm. something that the entire world faces, which mm-hmm. makes, which makes the shoddy system administration practices, and I know it's not the sysadmin's fault, right? It's it's it, it it boils down to fucking. And I'm pretty sure money, right? But yeah, I'm pretty sure the sysadmin is doing his job properly and with dignity, but with resources that they're giving you and the mandate that they're telling you, yeah, right? can only so, go so far. Yeah, and what what is uh well and and. It's it's weird, right? Because yes, it is absolutely true that this isn't something that only happens here. And it is because of that, that it is even more important for you to go above and beyond the established best practices in the security, in the IT security industry, precisely because the locality rule doesn't apply because it's the internet. <sighs> Oh, by the way, the locality rule is something that uh, talks about, like it's, it's in medical malpractice. Like um, you're only bound by the best practices of the particular area that you're practicing in. But that doesn't apply here precisely because it is the entire world. So the locality rule in this case is Earth. <laughs> the final <laughs> frontier. <laughs> but uh, what's, what's going to happen now to, well, first, Comelec? Because yeah, they released that. Well, it's a Senate inquiry coming up soon. Of course, of course, man. But these are the very senators that <laughs> are gonna benefit from it. Yeah. Well, uh, Senate inquiries, I think, are absolute bullshit, right? Of course, because all of them are in aid of legislation. If if you, dear listeners, if we had a video version of this, you would have seen like the largest air quotes in the world. <laughs> 
also known as this is our chance to have airtime so that next time we run they remember us <laughs> Um, <laughs> political grandstanding. That's exactly what Senate inquiries are for. Yes, and are used for rather. It hardly leads to legislation. Uh, <laughs> that and yeah, the National Bureau of Investigation says they're cracking down on Lonzek and those who actually did the breach. Whether or not that's true, at least <laughs> the statement is yeah, we're we're working on it. Yeah, but then I'm not. I'm I'm not like you know I I really don't like vigilante justice as much as I think Batman is the best fucking superhero ever. Hell yeah, right? But uh you know as much as I don't like vigilante justice and internet like lynch mobs and stuff. Um this this really strikes a nerve for me, right? Because uh we we've covered IT security in the past, etc. Mm-hmm. And even though I don't 100% agree with Groups like Anonymous, mm-hmm. when it comes to some of the methodology, uh, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Right. In this particular instance, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And right now, they're being really, really friendly. <laughs> and if, dear listeners, you want to be friendly, head over to channel14.com for podcasts and stuff. If you were affected by the leak, don't let us know. <laughs> But if you want to let us let us know other things, kindly email us. Contact at channel14.com. That gets to everybody involved in Channel 14. But if you want to get in touch with Third World Linux specifically, you can email us linux at channel14.com. If you want to ask uh, Radio Norm of Radio Norm if his data got leaked, uh, try to see if he will cover that in a future episode of Radio Norm, our other show. Um, will he? I hope so. Yeah. I should tell him. Um, you mentioned the Twitter? Not yet. At Third World Linux. And uh, well, I've said other shows like I haven't said PWR yet, which is uh, the special coverage of PWR. I think Martin will do for Jobber Talk. Yeah, because uh, it's gonna have a new show near in Paranya. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. But um, and and uh, uh head over to Patreon.com/channel14 if you wanna help us unsuck ourselves. Yeah, that's the pitch. The Patreon pitch. Help us unsuck ourselves because by helping us unsuck ourselves, we try our best to unsuck this country. <laughs> <laughs> because because um, a lot of economists have said that the economy of the Philippines remains viable despite its govern, in spite of and despite of the government. And um, that's simple. Because despite everything, despite all of this, we just do the work and be the best people we can be. So until next week. Keep on Linuxing. And always do things for love. So if you made it this far, this is the off-tangent section. And I, uh, I want to add... To ask Jal, wait, we, for, well, we forgot to mention that we're in What? the same uh, we're in the same place. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I want them to notice. Hopefully, they notice that. Oh, how come it's smoother? <laughs> how come the mics are better? The dialogue and the banter is faster. <laughs> how come they don't talk over each other as much? <laughs> <laughs> and there's no. Oh yeah, you go first or go ahead. <laughs> Because we are in the flesh when we recorded the episode. Yeah. And because it was a fairly stressful episode, I had to step out for a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, fuck it, let's record the off-tangent section out here. Under the stars of the Queen City. I like calling Cebu the Queen City. Because, eh, well, it is the Queen City. But hardly anyone I know calls it the Queen City, except you. Yeah. Because of that hardcore band, the Queen City crew. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. City. Yeah, it sounds cool. really cool. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Queen City of the South is Cebu. I mean, with the Korean. Uh, but- so, sorry, people from Cagayan de Oro. It beats the shit out of the city of golden friendship. <laughs> when when I was in Korea, uh, when I told them sparkling, mm-hmm. sparkling, yeah, sparkling, sparkles, but cold as dicks, man. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, when I was in Korea, they love Cebu. Yeah, man, and shit. it's best place in the Philippines. <laughs> well, beautiful place, Palawan. Chillest place is Cebu. No, it's- man. Cebu is that balance between chill and hectic. Chill and as urban. As it stands yeah. right mm-hmm. now, yeah. Uh, well, the first time I was here, it was 
chill as all hell. Yeah, but that was almost eight years. No, not eight years ago. Almost four years ago, I guess. And if you were here fourteen years ago, totally different place. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they love Cebu. They love. First thing they cited was the food, which again, not surprised. Second is temperature. Again, not surprised. And third, which I'm a bit surprised, is they like the place. And seeing it more and more, because Cebu, for those who are unfamiliar, have very tight roads. Yeah. Small roads. And if you've been to Seoul, <laughs> the amount of small roads they have, oh, just like home, with more trees. <laughs> and brown people. <laughs> and, and, and we have sidewalks here. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't use them anyway. <laughs> it's 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 yeah i like this place and uh, what i'm telling you earlier in the car i find it uh, so hard to do work because i just want to lie down and just yeah <laughs> <laughs> so earlier we had a, a fairly politically charged quote-unquote episode of no uh quote-unquote politically charged because it was an episode it wasn't like an episode in air quotes yeah it was an episode we still well we had to dabble on that episode because about tech, it's about third world. <laughs> yeah. So something that we've been doing as of late is thinking about like the vote. Yeah, the political candidates, especially and, for the upcoming elections, of course. And um, one of our friends is a staunch advocate of Cthulhu 2016. Of course. He is. Shows. It shows, actually. <laughs> right. Like all of the death and despair because fuck it. Right. We might as well have Armageddon. No lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> and and in response, you said that... Because, um, you see... Here we go. I never like to have somebody... If, 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 if there's absolute evil, despite everything that is absol- the absolute evil, you fight it with good. Okay. You counter it with somebody who will always be there. <laughs> you counter it with somebody who is close to the future. Like, kids... You counter it with your neighbor. <laughs> Totoro 2016. <laughs> I vote. I will vote for Totoro. But there's a strong front runner, like a last minute entry. Yeah, well, because, because yesterday at uh, Zine Fair, um, what was, uh, who are they? Whoop de doo comics were selling a bunch of pins. And um, given, given all of the uh, hopelessness and all of the despair in the country, um, I, I submit that. Uh, we need to vote for the person who is our only hope, Kenobi 2016. <laughs> <laughs> and th- they both have good platforms. Because what I like about Kenobi 2016 eh, is he's a keeper of the peace, <laughs> not a soldier. Right, right. An amazing diplomat, crappy economist. <laughs> and he can't determine if a gas is poisonous or not. <laughs> But under the rules of war, you're not allowed to use gas anyway <laughs> because of its indiscriminate nature. Yeah. But um, and, and and so like I've been going around with a with a Kenobi 2016 pin that was purchased or that, that I got from the good people over at Whoopie Doo. I'll, I'll link to their Facebook page in the show notes. Um, but another one of our friends, upon seeing this, oh man, uh, right? He um, yeah. he said that if you're looking for our only hope fucking Mandy Moore 2016 <laughs> because she will be there in places no one will find <laughs> with all your feelings so deep inside and as a nation we are collectively crying <laughs> <laughs> is it is it just me or or Cthulhu is now lagging behind with this string of new candidates. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, evil is not becoming a great option because it's such an extremely <laughs> extreme view. See, what Cthulhu has, like the destruction of humanity. Like, you don't. You want to have a, a certain chance, of course. Oh, by the way, um, anybody that's in the Philippines or following Philippine politics. Um, you you can interpret what we're saying as like some thinly veiled fucking metaphor for the current, <laughs> uh, for the current political candidates that we have. Yes, but rest assured, we've given up on all of those fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we, we, yeah, it's just, I've been telling everyone, who are you gonna vote for? Because we have friends who are hardcore for a particular candidate, or yeah. hardcore against one candidate, saying, don't vote, uh, vote anyone except this person, or just vote absolutely this one person. It's big talk around, yeah. 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 Uh, everywhere from the simplest simple man to the CEOs everyone you talk to kind of has an opinion yeah. and I'm still like serious talk I'm still undecided right. I'm leaning towards one particular candidate but undecided right but yeah <laughs> at the end of the day I really just give up on all of them I, I prefer last elections candidates by the way, um, we're sorry for all of the localization. No, we're, we're the spuffing. Uh, um, the 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 clipping because like you don't have your pop filter. Oh, so like it's 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 uh yeah, it's pretty poppy. Sorry about that. I, I should have gotten my pop filter inside. That's fine. Show our seams, open source and all that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know we're outside. Kenobi twenty sixteen. Kenobi twenty sixteen. Kenobi twenty sixteen. That's an amazing action. And I like the design of the pin. Yeah. Employing yeah. Starkiller logo. Right. Uh, Rebel Alliance logo, by the way. Although, Mandy Moore is looking like an amazing option. Mandy Moore is looking like an amazing option. Um, she has come out with some amazing tunes in the past, given that, given she has a great track record. <laughs> And you see how I deliver it? I was stopping my... That's why I paused before I deliver it. Because I was trying to hold it in. <laughs> Good Mandy Moore's track record. Mm, although I did not like the fact that she dated Zach Braff before. Because the, the Scrubs episode was not amazing. <laughs> and, uh, not sure how she is now, actually. Probably living a private life. With all the royalty she made, right? She's running for president. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my own little head cannon. But I'm afraid if Obi Wan wins, it's gonna be a dictatorship. That's Cthulhu. Wait, no. Cthulhu is the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> because technically, if we struck him down, he will become more powerful than we could ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> so that, we have like one former listener <laughs> who keeps on saying that we shouldn't giggle as much. We're so sorry. <laughs> and here's the case. Uh, another reason why I'm going for Totoro 2016. Although considering Obi Wan, Totoro 2016 will improve transportation. Have you seen those cat buses? <laughs> Not sure how he deals with the weather though, because he has an umbrella. <laughs> He'll just umbrellas beside you. I'm not sure how he can do that for a hundred million people. <laughs> but he is your neighbor. <laughs> but he is your neighbor. There's that. Because he's everybody's neighbor. Mm -hmm. Takes care of the kids. <laughs> All we have to do is go next door and borrow the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> or a leaf. <laughs> he's a giant leaf. <laughs> oh, he smiles too. It's kind of creepy though. It is. It, it is, is indeed. His smile is kind of creepy. Although I do like, I do like Totoro. But he's he's friends with dust bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> How long have I stretched all these political metaphors? Right, but, but, but then again, this isn't supposed to be a political metaphor because, like, thinking about it now, and this is, um, we we sort of thought through the main episode, and we were like, you know what, fuck it, let's just talk about Kenobi and Totoro. <laughs> For the off tangent section, and it was it was only as we were discussing it that I realized that you know what we do have some like we can draw some parallels between these people <laughs> and between these fictional people and uh, the, the current political candidates. Yeah, the current political candidates. So you know, I, I would like to make and like <laughs> make disclamatory remark upon disclamatory remark that no, this isn't anything to do with these people. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. But I mean, Cthulhu though. <laughs> Cthulhu. 